Hello, hello everybody, it's Girl Got Game, and welcome to another Gander video after all this time. Today, I am checking out Shared Beauty. This was a visual novel that was made for Sp Spooktober, and Nia, the game developer, reached out to me about a week, week and a half ago, and asked me if I would consider checking it out, and I said, sure because this looks delightful and tis the season for spooks, as they say. So let me read to you a little bit about what this is about. So once upon a time, there was a poor village, one you and your friends hope a marriage to the Honorable Odin will save. And I will apologize in advance if I mispronounce these names, <laughs> as always. In an attempt to help the beautiful Feralda secure the noble's heart, you convince her to undergo a spell of youth and beauty. The noble falls head over heels for her and all seems to be well. It's only when the rest of you notice signs of premature and rapid aging that the spell's real cost is known. Will you sacrifice your life for the village and love's sake? Or will jealousy and desperation consume you? So yeah. That's what we're getting into today. Let me fix all my stuff. Okay, I think we're good to go. There we go. So yeah, let's just jump in and see what happens. Oh, so bright. Go towards the light. Soft, hazy sunshine envelops the village you grew up in. You can make out dew drops on the grass glittering around you as you sit outside with your little sister, August. It's a misty early morning. August blows into her hands, trying to warm them up before she rejoins you, intending to the bucket of laundry. Hello, August. Isgard, my hands hurt! I know the water is cold, but we can't always boil it. We need to save the wood, understand? She pouts, but mumbles a yes and continues. Your eyes wander until you see another seam about to snap on her clothes. It's only been a few weeks since you and your mother have mended them last. You bite your lip and look away. You wish you could provide more for August, but the last harvest wasn't good, only making the village and your family poorer. Important people only come around every once in a while to collect taxes. Otherwise, you and your people are on your own. Even the witch has left this place. Dang, you know you're in dire straits when. You hear footsteps and look up. It's Miltrout. You often hang out with each other. I'm going to really apologize to Miltrout. I feel like I'm butchering your name. <laughs> guys, guys, have you heard? A novel is coming! He sent his harbinger ahead to arrange his lodgings! What, to our village? But we're so far out. He's passing through! I hope he buys some of our wares. Millie, you have to be realistic. Especially with nobles. They're not really the sharing type, are they? Oh, come on, you and your pessimism. It's not like we have anything else to look forward to. And they at least have to stock up on food and water. That's true. I just wish people like him would care more about us. As you try to warm your hands, you hear chatter and laughter growing louder. Oh, hello, it's Feralda, looking so pretty. It's Feralda and her friends. Even after all these years of knowing her, you are still in awe of her beauty. Once they're out of earshot, Miltrout sighs. Oh, I'm so jealous of her. Must be nice having those good looks. Hey man, it's hard being a silhouette. I get it. I get it. I get you. <laughs> but I do have an admirer of my own, you know. Do tell. Before you could ask her to tell you more, another woman traipses across the grass to join you. It's Sigland, looking as confident and reliable as always. Admiring Feralda again. Ugh. She may have a pretty face. But don't you think she's a little slow on the uptake? Sigland grins and Miltrout politely laughs. Well, I don't know anything about all these characters, really, so I'll just play it safe since Feralda can't hear me and agree with Sigland. 
Say Glenn is expecting your agreement, and the spike of jealousy you felt earlier spurs you to join in. She always hesitates before answering questions. It's tiring waiting for her to keep up. You know you're just being mean, and you always feel bad joining Siglin's gossip, but you can't help yourself. Okay, noted. Sometimes the men and elders of the village compare the other women to Feralda. It hurts to hear their whispers, to see their smirks. It has always hurt. One time your own mother mentioned her beauty and said what a joy it must be to make clothes for her. She never said such things about you or your other siblings. Dang. Rather than being truly angry at Feralda, you're more angry at yourself for feeling like this. But she gave me a cookie yesterday! I don't like what you're saying! Good. Good on August for standing up for her. Oh, no. I'm sorry, August. The other two apologize as well. Now you're ashamed that your own little sister had to condemn your mean words. Trying to salvage the mood, Miltroud claps her hands. Um, so about the noble! Do you guys have anything you want to sell to him? I'm not sure. I don't think he needs a woven basket from us. We also don't have the sorts of things that a noble might like. I think your carved wooden figures look awesome, Eastgard! Thank you, August. You pet her head and smile. She beams back at you. By the way, I also heard that the noble is still single. Sigland snorts. <laughs> oh, come on! You looking to try climbing into his bed? You smack Sigland's leg. August is still here! Not in front of the children! Sigland shrugs and rolls her eyes. You look back down at August. How about you leave the washing to me and go help up Mother in the house? Okay. She closes the door behind her, and you sigh. <sighs> well, Sigland, now you are free to be your vulgar self. She snickers and slowly looks over Miltroud from head to toe. Mm -hmm. Miltroud frowns and starts to cover herself with her arms. Well, I guess you could try for a night and see if his conscience would make him stay with you. Miltroud slaps Siglin's back three times. You are disgusting! Ever since you got married, you have been so bold about these topics. She finishes the last sentence with another slap. Siglin just laughs and takes the blows in stride. Anyway, what I originally wanted to say is... She bends down a little and starts to whisper. What about showing off Feralda to him? Sigland and you look at each other, then slowly turn to Miltroud. You mean as his potential wife? Look, we need to do something so our village can survive. Feralda is not married yet. She is our best bet to get someone wealthier interested in our village. I heard that nobles really care about treating their in-laws right. Helping out a village of commoners would be nothing to them. You all stay silent for a few seconds. Then Sigland furrows her brows and starts to scratch her chin. Do you guys remember the witch? Yes, of course. She's been gone for a while, hasn't she? Yeah. I'm actually glad. You never know when a priest will finally want to come visit us. Anyway, every time I went to buy medicine from her, it felt like her face had changed. Into Feralda, you mean? In what way? Sometimes she had more wrinkles, sometimes she had less. She seemed more youthful before she left, actually, and her eyes seemed even prettier. I'm guessing she might have had a spell to become more beautiful. Why don't we try it for ourselves, then? Look at the foundations we have. You think you could beat someone like Feralda? Just by making your base look nicer? Miltroud looks clearly hurt, but doesn't say anything back. Your cheeks burn as your fingers curl around the fabric of your skirt. Well, there's also something else to consider. There might be some risks to that spell. But one little setback for Feralda wouldn't hurt much, right? 
You look at Sigland with confusion. Don't think too hard about it. I'm just saying it's worth a try. I guess. Look, if you really want to make sure Feralda gets picked, then we should use magic to help. We could look in the witch's old cabin, find something that works. But we're not... We're not witches. What if the spell really does go wrong? Siglin shrugs her shoulders. People like Feralda can take that. She doesn't even wait for a reply before she just changes the topic. Poor Feralda. Miltrout adjusts to Siglin's whims as always. You look back towards the door of your home. You think about August's clothes, about the fear you all feel whenever someone gets sick. How many times have you prayed for things to get better? Then you remember Feralda's smile. She smiles so often, even living here. She has very long fingers. She just gets so many compliments every day. So many men stare at her when she walks by, leaving everyone else, leaving you, unnoticed. You need your skirt with your fists. Yeah, Feralda can take the risks. She has it better than a lot of you. She could try and help out for once. You try to not think about how a commoner might be treated when marrying into a noble family, or how the noble themselves might treat their spouse. It'd be a good deal for her, right? She would like the idea too, right? But what exactly do you know about her? You are not that close. Not anymore. Ooh, some history. With mixed feelings, you go to bed early that day. Mm-hmm. The next day. Someone is knocking on your door. It's Feralda. Well, what a coinky dink. Feralda? Hello! Um... It's been a while since you've spoken to each other one-on-one. -on -one. Hi. Sorry, um... Are you alright? What's going on? It's Hermina. She has been coughing so much and it just won't get better. And today she even started having a fever. She only has her father left. Do you have any medicine for this? You shake your head. Feralda covers her face with her hands. Oh no. I already asked everyone else on the way here and they all said the same. It's all so frustrating. We have no priest here and even the witch has left us. What are we supposed to do? You pat her back and bring her a cup of water to calm her. This might actually be the perfect moment. Actually... Do you want to go to the witch's cabin with me? Feralda looks at you in confusion. But she's not there anymore. Suddenly, you're getting cold feet. How are you going to convince her to undergo a spell you have never tried before? You don't know if it even exists. You've just opened your mouth to take back your words when Sigland appears in the doorway. Get out of here, harpy. Harpy devil. Excuse me, do you have some milk? My little boy got sick and I want to make some milk tea for- She pauses, staring at Feralda for a moment, then she looks to you. I didn't know that Feralda liked to visit you. Siglin, do you have medicine for coughing and fevers? Not anymore, sweetie. Was that what you were talking about? Siglin's sharp gaze on you makes you feel small and anxious. For some reason, Ysgard asked me if I wanted to go to the witch's cabin. Siglin's eyes widen for a moment. You notice that she's trying to suppress the grin that is forming on her lips. Well, maybe we can find some medicine there. We can only hope the witch left something behind. A beautiful smile finally returns to Feralda's face as she turns back to you. Oh, that's why you asked. She takes your hands in hers. Guilt stabs you in your chest as you see her warm and genuine smile. Let's go, Isgard! This reminds you of her younger self. She used to pull you along, just like she is now, to play outside. I gotta say, I really like the 
art. Like how she's because she's like slightly colored in, like she really stands out from the black and white. It's really nice. Um, I can't remember if I said she used to pull you along just like she is now to play outside. You were both so carefree back then. How does Feralda feel about that time after all these years? Is she sad you distance yourself from her? Does she know it was because you're jealous of her? Do you remember playing outside in September? Do you remember playing together? Feralda stops for a moment and thinks. I thought you were the one who forgot. Being a child and playing all day was fun. You remember making flower rings and garlands? You smile and nod. Sigland snorts. Get out of here, Sigland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can reminisce later. We need that medicine now. All right. Feralda lets go of your hands, bringing you back to the present. And walks ahead of you. Siglin comes closer and whispers into your ear. You probably thought of the spell before the medicine, right? Not that I blame you. We can try and convince her there. Let's get Miltrout, too. You look at the ground and follow Sigland. On your way, you knock on Miltrout's door to convince her to join you. It's very easily done. You don't even need to say much after she sees Feralda. Unaware of the question the three of you would soon ask her, Feralda walks with light feet into the forest. Feralda, no! A stick snaps under your shoes as you wander along a pathway between the trees. You know, this music is actually quite nice. I'm going to put it up a little bit. There we go. That's a little bit better for me. Almost no sunlight filters through. The canopy is too dense, typical of the region you live in. Foggy days make it even harder to find your way. Thankfully, it's clear today. After a bend in the path, you catch sight of the witch's cabin. Half hidden between branches and bushes, the eerie wooden house looms over you. None of the villagers, even the older ones, can remember when the witch first appeared. She was just there one day, along with her cabin. No one really trusted her, but no doctor from the city visited the village, and her medicine was certainly useful in their absence. The village grew to begrudgingly accept her in time. But then she disappeared without a word, leaving this cabin to be claimed by the forest. The old wooden door squeaks as you open it. The house's interior is unchanged, despite the witch having been gone for months. There is no dust to be seen. Hmm. By all accounts, it looks like someone just left for a walk. Seeing this unnerves you a little, but you force yourself to step further inside. The four of you carefully look through shelves and chests for clues. You decide to gather all the glass vials and bottles. Any idea what all these do? Not really. Maybe one of the books can tell us more? You guys can read? My uncle used to teach me before he left the village to become a priest. Does he ever send you money? Priests must have it a little better than us, no? My father doesn't seem to be getting along with him anymore. That's sad. What a pity. Anyways, I guess we'll gather some books then. A lot of the books you find are written in various languages you can't read. Nonetheless, you admire the craftsmanship behind each book, running your fingers over the pages. Then, Peralta finds one you can read. What does it say, Isgard? Charms and spells for the late Walpurga. You all gather closer around the table on which the book lays. With utmost curiosity, you start to flick through its contents. The first page has a dedication to Walpurga. Your enemies are no more. S. Okay. In the pages beyond, there are spells to find lost objects, give others nightmares, or make them fall in love. After much searching, you finally find it. The spell of youth and beauty. 
It instructs you to kill a dove and use its blood to purify a small shrine. The receiver of the spell should put their right hand on the shrine. The others should cut their thumbs and put their wounds to the receiver's lips so they can drink their blood. Oh, that sounds great. Afterwards, the wounded participants should hold hands in a circle around the receiver and chant together... That, which I'm going to now pronounce horribly. So, prepare yourselves. Geben Jugend Affer Selbstgioni. Ein schöner wird das in allen Landen Neid schöners Motasin. Now the question remains of how you convince Feralda to take part in this. And? So I haven't exactly found a list of all the potions she made, but... You take a deep breath and look to Feralda. I actually had another reason to invite you to the cabin. Feralda looks confused. Feralda... You, like all of us, suffer from the lack of resources we have in the village. You have a kind heart, so it hurts you even more that we can't get medicine for people like your poor sick friend Ermina. But you're beautiful, Feralda. You always have been. You might have a chance with the noble who is coming soon. And with the noble's favor, you can make life better for Ermina and everyone. Feralda only looks down and sighs. I'm not sure. In the end, I'm also just a peasant. But what does that have to do with this cabin? I'd rather she hear it from me. Siglin said that just before the witch left, she suddenly looked... younger and more beautiful. But she didn't completely change. It was just like she had improved on what was already there. We wanted to come here to see if she had left anything behind, a potion or a spell, which she had used to beautify herself. And I think I've just found it in this book. Siglin looks satisfied. Siglin then puts her arm around Feralda's shoulders. If the witch uses this spell herself, it must be safe for us, for you, to try. With her magic and your beauty, any noble would surely fall for you. But... Please, Feralda, our hopes rest on you. As his wife, you could ask anything of him. For food, clothes, medicine, all that we have gone without for so long and more. Maybe even a priest. You would help everyone. Feralda takes a deep breath and then looks at you with conviction. All right. I'd rather do something than nothing. You avoid meeting her intense gaze. Now, tell us what we have to do, Eastguard. You repeat what you've read to them. A dove? Hmm. We would have to go back to the village and see if anyone has caught one. Feralda looks around the cluttered cabin then disappears into another room without another word. Mm-hmm. Much to everyone's surprise, she comes back with a dead dove. From her dead dove compartment from when she was a witch, yes. Mm-hmm. It seems the witch liked to keep stocked with the ingredients she needed for her spells. It's curious that the dove doesn't show any signs of rotting. Is there still magic in this cabin, keeping the witch's ingredients fresh? Mm-hmm. I see you blushing over there, girl. I hope it doesn't have to be freshly killed. After taking a small knife from the table, you prepare the shrine and the three of you position yourselves around Feralda. What was that? You flinch when you have to cut yourself and put your thumb on her lips. Okay. It's clear she is uncomfortable, but she bra bravely continues and takes a sip. Which one of y'all was so messy you had to, like, drag your thumb up her cheek? That's rude. After she takes in a drop of blood from each of you, you start to chant. The room shakes slightly. A breeze plays with Feralda's ha hair, and for a second you think you see flower patterns glowing in her eyes. 
Whispers fly past your ears. And then, complete silence. You wait for a few more seconds before you feel safe enough to move. Did it work? Well, something just responded. Feralda looks at her hands and then stands up. Do I look any different? Not sure. Maybe it takes time to show? Siglin looks frustrated and turns away from Feralda. I hope that is the case. With a slight feeling of hope, you start to look through more books to identify the potions. Two are meant to treat coughs, at least. Siglin and Feralda take one each before you return home. Can they read? Riddled with anxiety, you take a long time to fall asleep. For the next few days, you, Siglin, and Miltroud observe Feralda in minute detail. Her hair has become much more vibrant. Her skin has lost any trace of dryness or the small scars she's gained from all the work she does. The men turn around even more whenever Feralda walks past them. Soon the four of you gather together in a corner of the village, where almost no one goes to talk about the plan. We were successful, Feralda! I think so too! So, um, okay. What do you even talk about with a noble? I'm gonna teach you some interesting topics. Don't worry. When is he arriving again, Miltrout? In three days, I think. That means we can try and befriend the maids working for him in advance. Siglin puts her hands on her hips. I say we prepare some good food to win them over. Sounds like a plan. You say your goodbyes and return home. A few days later. The whole village watches as the noble and his entourage arrive. He steps down from his strong white horse to survey his surroundings. The village elders immediately surround him. The Honorable Odin, you grace us with your presence. Oh, dang. How handsome. Also, that is a gigantic jewel brooch thing you have, man. <laughs> Not compensating for anything. <laughs> Odin puts his hand up to stop the elders from speaking. He sighs. Oh, we can skip the formalities. Where is my harbinger? The harbinger steps forward and bows. I am here! Is there any hope for some fitting lodgings? His vassal shakes his head. So it's another night in the tent. Elder, do you have a large field we can use? The elders look at each other. Siglin steps forward before they can reply. There's a lot of space next to our house, Honorable Odin. The noble fixes her with an icy and indifferent stare. She immediately bows her head. <laughs> he just stares into her soul. I did not give you permission to speak, but I suppose it's no matter. I am in a permissive mood today. Men, prepare the tents and follow the woman to the site. His entourage follows Siglind as she begins to make her way to the field. She steals glances at you, urging you to join in, so you, Miltroud, and Feralda walk alongside her. You all start to whisper. Siglid, are you out of your mind? You know how easily a noble can punish us? Nothing ventured, nothing gained, my dear. We are trying to get him to marry a peasant. You reach the field and Odin's men immediately start building the tents and sleeping places for themselves. A carriage brings up the rear with rich furnishings to be placed inside Odin's tent. The men look well trained and carry leather armor, bows, and swords. It makes you feel anxious to see so many armed men in your village. They will be busy for a while, so let's come back later after they're done. A few hours later. Do you think my current appearance is enough? You had all put your best skills to use to dress up Feralda. She would definitely outshine everyone in a normal village festival, 
but the noble's taste is unknown to you. Peralta, it's gonna be okay. Trust our judgment. You take a deep breath and approach the maids nearby. <sighs> Can we help you with anything? The maids look up in surprise. Oh, we would be very happy about that. As you can imagine, we need plenty of water and food. You look at your friends with a smile. We had heard from the Harbinger when you would arrive and prepared some things beforehand. The maids are immediately in a merry mood. A lot of bread, water, and diluted wine is brought by the other villagers and wheeled into the encampment. You look bitterly at the bounty of food. You know what your village will only be eating one... Oh, sorry, you know that your village will only be eating one meal a day for the next week, just so you can supply the noble and his entourage. The more elaborate dishes are brought to a table in front of a big tent. You are told the noble's taste tester is there. Is that the one who has to test the food for poison? Even out here? Siglin shrugs. I guess you never know where your enemies hide when you gain power. Sigland looks at you and Feralda. I think Feralda would be too nervous to speak if she went alone. Isgard, ask if you're allowed to bring one of our pies to him. You slowly nod in response. Your heart starts to beat very loudly. You pray that the noble is still in a good mood. Hesitantly stepping forward, you approach the table with Feralda in tow. The taste tester looks at you with utter annoyance. What do you want? We would like to bring one of our best pies to the Honorable Odin. Especially our dear Feralda. She admires him. Feralda nervously fiddles with her hands. The taste tester scans her from head to toe. I see. Well, I guess having something to look at should be alright by him. He calls for one of the men, a knight who looks to be in charge of the others. Good day to you both. I am the captain here, in service of the Honorable Odin. If you want to get closer to him, you will have to go under inspection. If you are not willing, I suggest you leave. You nudge Feralda. She now looks at the captain, whose eyes widen slightly as they assess her. We are quite alright with it, thank you. Yes. I think his lordship would be pleased as well. He searches both of you, and as uncomfortable as it is, his hand never stays in one place too long. Good on him. You and Feralda exchange a glance, and she relaxes slightly. I am done. Wait a moment, and I will ask if he wishes for this pie in your company. He disappears into the noble's tent and soon returns. He is fine with this. Taste tester, if you will. The taste tester slowly sits down, sighs heavily, and takes a bite. It's quite delicious. Neither of them move. You can't help it stiffen in place. Anything strange? No, they're clear. With that, you are guided to Odin's tent. Odin sits comfortably on his bed. Damn, they even have a whole bed in his tent? Nice! He doesn't turn his head or try to meet your eyes. You can leave the pie on the table. You set the pie down while you give Feralda a soft nudge, urging her to step forward. She waits silently in front of him. After what feels like an eternity, Odin finally deigns to look at her, briefly in annoyance before shock overtakes him. The noble is entranced within moments! Huzzah! What is your name? Feralda. How old? Twenty-two. He slowly rises from his bed, circles around her, <laughs> and then sits at the table in front of her. Wow, he is smitten, I dare say. Would it be alright, Feralda, if you grant me your company while I eat? Um... Hmm. 
I mean, he basically dismissed me, didn't he? <laughs> if I stay, he'll probably cut my head off. Um... I mean, I assume we discussed the plan before this happened, so... You got this, Feralda. I believe in you. Feralda nods, and you slowly leave the tent. As soon as the tent flap closes behind you, a wave of guilt stabs you like a hot needle. The significance of leaving an unmarried woman alone with a powerful man does not escape you. You wish you had found a way to stay by her side. But like a rat, you rush away. I kept my head, hooray! For now. You wait anxiously for hours in your home with Miltroud and Siglin discussing the day's events. Finally, as the daylight begins to fade, Feralda returns. She looks happy and sports a slight flush on her cheeks. Well, well, well. Looks like we have half a pair of lovebirds here. Feralda sputters and shyly looks away. Miltroud cautiously clears her throat. <clears> throat> he wasn't rough with you, I hope. No! No, he was really quite patient and kind. He explained why he's traveling through here, and asked how my life is in the village. He smiled a lot while we were talking. Sigland laughs loudly and slaps Feralda's back. <laughs> I knew you could do it! Look how you tamed that big old noble with that cute face of yours! You all sigh with relief. It's alright to continue like this. Feralda is going to be all right. You are going to be all right. Everything will be all right. Until it's not. You wake up early the next morning. With a yawn, you stretch your arms and push the hair out of your face. But then you feel something thin stuck between your fingers. Your eyes slowly wander towards your hand. Your skin feels thinner and drier than usual. Oh, is she sucking the beauty and life force out of you three? <laughs> That's actually kind of deserved. <laughs> I know they're desperate, but they were like, eh, if something goes wrong, you know, she can take it. And then it's like, mm, actually, the three of you are the ones paying the price. And on your palm are several strands of loose hair. You immediately stand up, stumbling towards a bucket full of water to check your reflection. Your face looks fine, and so does your hair. At least at first. August stirs and rubs her eyes. You open your mouth and close it again. You can't bring yourself to admit what is happening to you. Instead, you shake your head and tell August to go back to sleep. She blinks, yawns, and lays back down. With everything asleep once more, you sneak your way outside and throw away the strands of hair. Why would you be losing hair? No one in your family has lost their hair this early in life. Just then, an old woman walks by. It's Jonhild, one of the few elders who are still alive in the village and a very dear person to you. Oh my! Why are you already awake, my dear? A child like you needs sleep. You smile and greet her. I'm already 22, Jonhild. You will always be a child to me, my dear. Did you have a nightmare? You start to nervously knead your hands. Something like that? Um, actually, Jonhild, is it possible to lose hair at my age? Jonhild tilts her head, inspecting you closely. That's very unusual, my dear. Hmm, maybe you are stressed. Yeah, I'm like, if you guys aren't getting enough food, it could be malnutrition. Has something difficult been troubling you? Maybe how you feel about your acts towards Feralda? You hesitate, then shake your head. You feel ashamed just thinking of the possible dangers you have exposed Feralda to. No way would you be able to confess that to Yonhilt. How about you join me in my knitting tomorrow? 
I was going to make some scarves for the coming winter. That sounds very nice. I will be there. She softly pats your hand and smiles. Take care, Ysgard. With newfound warmth in your heart, you return home and do your usual chores. The next day. When you arrive at Yonhild's home, you can already smell hot herb tea and pie she has prepared. You enjoy a sweet conversation with her while you eat. After you finish, Yonhild prepares the wool and needles. You take a seat. As you pick up your knitting needles and prepare the first row of knits, your fingers start to hurt. Dang arthritis! You suck in a groan between your gritted teeth and shake off the wool. To ease the pain, you slowly open and close your hand. The joints hurt when you flex your fingers. Are you alright? I... I don't know what is happening, Neonhild. My hands hurt. I've barely started knitting. You swallow hard to hold back your tears. Oh, poor dear. If only we could visit the witch. Or just had a village doctor. She gently hugs you and caresses your back. You choke back a sob. You are not alone, my dear. I am here with you, all right? You draw in deep breaths to calm down, and after a minute you break away to look at her. Her face is full of worry, and she takes your hands in hers. Ysgard, to be specific, do your joints hurt? Yes. That only started well after I turned 50, my dear. Well, that's bad news bears for me, I'm afraid, in reality. <laughs> my joints hurt all the time. <laughs> you bite your lip. A tear rolls down your cheek. Jan Hilt sighs sadly and rubs your palms with her thumbs to soothe you. Drink tea often and try to take a walk outside every day. I know when we are scared we want to hide away, but you have to be kind to your own body and keep it moving. Especially now. Can you do that for me? You nod. Good. But I also think it's alright if you take it easy for today and get some rest. Tell your mother that it was on my recommendation. You return home and tell your mother what Janhild said. What? But tomorrow we're all going out to collect berries! Do you think you can at least carry a little? I'm sorry. She sighs. Oh, you can sleep today at least. There's nothing pressing right now. You agree and head to your room to lay down. You've been sick before, but you've never feared what was happening to your body so much. What if tomorrow it hurts even more? You lay awake in bed with fear in your heart. The next day. Days are flying by. You follow the other women of the village to collect berries in the forest. Your mother, true to her word, had given you a small basket. Thanks, Mom. Soon you spot Miltrout and Sigland and move to join them. Sigland is looking much more tired than usual, and Miltrout's hair looks... thinner? The last few days. Were they all so strange for you? I think my back is hurting more than usual. And my skin is so dry. In my case, it's my arms. They don't seem to be as strong anymore. I almost let my son fall. Siglind covers her face with her one free hand. You had never seen her so weak and afraid before. Not even just after childbirth. My hair is slowly falling out, and my fingers hurt when I tried to knit. Janhild said those things only happened to her when she was in her fifties. Siglind looks terrified. Wait. No, no, no. But... We're aging faster, aren't we? No, we can't. We... I need to be strong! My son can't take care of himself yet! Siglin, not so loud! She forces herself to calm down. Thankfully, no one has noticed her outburst. 
have you guys seen anyone else looking weak or sick? Maybe there is something in the water of the well. You shake your head, so does Sigland. So... Only those of us who gave their blood to Feralda are getting worse. You all turn your heads to look at Feralda. She is full of energy as she forages with the others. Her, her hair, her skin, and her light movements all look bright and lively. You try to ignore the churning in your stomach when you look at her and push yourself to focus on the berries. Face at ease, guard. Don't try to look away. We don't know what it is! Feralda just did what we told her to! Yeah, and it all worked out well for her! Look at her! Young, pretty, healthy, with a kind noble as a future husband to boot! Um, um, how about we look in the witch's cabin again? Maybe there's a way to undo the spell. But we did all that to make sure the noble falls in love with Feralda! What if we undo it and suddenly the noble has no interest? What about the village? We'll go to the cabin and decide after we read how to do it. Understood? Her fierce gaze makes you take a step back. You pause, but ultimately not in agreement. I don't know. I think you guys gotta deal with it. For the sake of the village. And because of your own jealousy. That same night, the three of you ransack the cabin until you finally find the book again. Just why wasn't it in the same spot as before? Hmm... Before you can think about it, you try to concentrate on your more pressing issue. You leap through the book, stopping once again at the page for the spell of youth and beauty. Brows furrowed, you carefully read it again, continuing to the next few pages. They contain notes of past experiments the witch made until the right words for the spell were found. And then, at the bottom of the last page, you find a paragraph on reversing the spell itself. Read it! Hurry! I used a test group and made them give their youth and beauty to one of the other members. Observing them made it clear that the ones who gave their blood age faster. This is why you gotta read all the instructions before you do anything, you dummies. A verbal reversal spell was not enough to stop the process. The only method I found so far is to kill the one who drinks the blood. After the receiver's death, the others slowly recover. Maybe it's like damming a river? More testing will be needed. All of you freeze in silence. For what feels like an eternity, you can only hear the wind and animals outside. Miltroud starts to shake her head. But Feralda just did what we told her to. So we are aging a lot faster. And we don't even know how much time we have left. Siglin slams her hands on the table. I can't die so soon! What about my child? Well, you should have thought of that. Who is going to take care of him? Um, is your husband still around? I want to see him grow up. I want to be there for my husband. I can't leave them behind. She takes a deep, shuddering breath. It's decided. As unfair as it is to Feralda, we need our lifespans back. And you will tell no one about this, understood? You are about to say something, but she grabs your wrist so hard it hurts. Dang, how do you still have the strength? That's not fair. Try telling someone and see what you'll make me do, Isgard. Terrified, you mumble some sort of reply. Seglin lets go of your wrist and you all step outside in silence. You return home with leaden feet and a heavy heart. As you shut the door, you could swear you heard a snicker in the wind. <laughs> the next morning, you almost let the axe fall onto your feet while chopping wood. Well, that's not good. How are the elders doing their daily tasks with such weakened bodies? Siglin visits you after breakfast. 
She brings you behind your own home, out of sight from both the villagers and the visitors. I feel like there's probably more to that experiment book, and it just keeps, like, updating over time. It's like, oh yes, and also, the one who uh, sticks the dagger into her heart will die instantly. And you must drink from her blood in order to save yourself. She brings you behind your own home, out of sight from both the villagers and the visitors. Eastguard, meet me later in the forest by our usual spot. We need to discuss something. You can imagine what it is about. Alright, I will be there. Around dusk, you return to the forest to meet Sigland again. This time, Miltrout is there as well, looking just as uncomfortable as you. Everyone's here. Good. So, we need a plan. And no, we cannot leave Feralda alive. Is this the conviction of a mother, or was this side of Sigland always there? Was she always this ready to sacrifice others for her own survival? Isgard, any ideas? Well, it's kind of hard now because the noble cares about Feralda. Getting her to be alone with us might be harder now, too. Miltrout, have anything to counter that? Maybe we can convince her if we say it's to make a surprise present for the Honorable Odin. Didn't you used to make flower garlands with Feralda when you were kids? You avoid Siglin's eyes. It's such an innocent memory, unmarked by your later jealousy of Feralda. A time when you just enjoyed her company. And now Siglin wants to use that to lure Feralda to her death? Are you listening, Isgard? Yes. Then invite her to go flower picking. Tell her you want to make a flower garland for the Honorable Odin with her. You take your time replying, but you know Sigland will only accept one answer. Still, you want to delay her plans if you can. But looking for flowers at night wouldn't make sense. Oh, right. Just get her to come into the deep woods then. Near the cabin. We just need to push her face right into the earth so her screams won't be as loud. What a cold-hearted, matter-of-fact answer. Go now. Miltrout and I will prepare while you get her. You turn around and walk back to the village. Will you really go through with this? Nope. I'm not probably gonna die anyway, but you know what? I ain't no murderer. <laughs> Peralta doesn't deserve this. You've always wanted the village to get better. Even if it means you have to pay the price. You accept your new condition and begin to think. There's still time to stop the plan, but you have to be careful. You know Sigland won't forgive you for this. You head to Feralda's home, but she isn't there. Her foraging basket and shears are gone, so she is likely in the forest gathering herbs. You find Feralda alone and wave her over to you. Oh, Isgard! What is it? I was just about to go home. I just had an idea for something that we could give to his lordship as a surprise. Oh? Remember making flower garlands together? He would certainly be happy about getting one from you. You think so, but... That was when we were younger. And... and... Girls only gave those to the boys they liked. Well... I would say you two are really close now, no? All the more reason to. Yes. What a sweet reaction. You watch her with conflicting feelings. You want to cheer her on, but you also feel jealous seeing her happiness. A kind, good-looking man, a rich one, no less, giving her such attention and care. You know she is kind and think she deserves it. But it doesn't stop that lingering bitterness. And then, there's this murky feeling of immense guilt that aches in your chest when you remember Siglin's words. Listen, Feralda, there's something I need to confess. What? You pull Feralda closer to you and carefully look around. Pull some of my hair. 
I'm glad. I'm so glad. I'm like, why don't you guys just tell her what's going on with you? Peralta does so, confusion written on her face. See how it comes away with your fingers? That's how easily they fall out now. What? Are you alright? Peralta, there are other things happening, and it's not just me. Sigland, Miltroud, and I all have noticed our bodies changing. We're aging faster. But how? We went back to the cabin and read more of the book. Apparently what the spell does is it gives you our youth and beauty. Feralda reels back, terrified, and rapidly shakes her head. No! No, no, no! I would have never agreed to this if I knew! We've got to do something! I know. I know. But, Feralda... To reverse the effects, we would have to kill you. It said it was the only way. And I am here to warn you, because Siglin and Miltrout are planning to try that way. But... but what shall we do? We need to find his lordship immediately. As a noble, he can give out judgment to us. That would mean... Yes, Miltrout and Siglin would die. And... Maybe I would too. Feralda shakes her head and looks at you with determination. I can't imagine how much courage this took. I will convince Odin to spare you since you have saved my life. The only problem is, I heard that today he is surveying the woods. I'm not sure why, but I think they're looking for bandits. You look in the direction where Siglind and Miltrout are waiting for you. If you don't bring Feralden now, they're going to start looking for you. We need to be faster than them. We need his protection now. You and Feralda run. You hope that Siglin and Miltroud wait long enough before they come looking for you. You look around and hope you can spot Odin's men. Should you scream to catch their attention? Would they mistake you for a bandit? But what if Siglin hears your scream? You continue to run for a while, but with your lower stamina, exhaustion soon takes over and you both stop to catch your breath. Can you see anyone? No, I don't. I guess they're not looking for you yet. That's good. Let's at least walk slowly, just to be on the move. You both support each other's weight as you walk. After a few tense minutes that feel like hours, you finally spot Odin's banner. Oh my goodness, are we gonna live? Odin! I am here! You get scared in case Sigland is nearby, but then you notice Odin's banner approaching very quickly through the trees. Odin gallops into view, like a hero. He brings his horse to a stop and immediately climbs down to hug Feralda. Dang, boy fell hard and fast. Why are you here? We're looking for bandits, Feralda. It's not safe. I know, but we really needed to see you now. Can we talk alone with Isgard? He narrows his eyes at you, but nods. You walk a bit further away as his men fan out surround you, fan out and surround you to guard the area. Feralda takes a deep breath. Please don't think too differently of me when I tell you all this. Oh, you're actually going to tell him why they're trying to kill you. Okay, respect. She loves him enough to be honest with him. Odin looks concerned. Feralda confesses the whole story, including the spell. You tremble as Odin considers her words. I can assure you, your lordship, that she was always beautiful. The spell only improves what is already there. He sighs and raises his hand to silence you. Feralda. If I only cared for your appearance, you would not have held my attention for this long. It will be alright. I am here for you. Yes! I can believe in true love! Hooray! A single tear rolls down Feralda's cheek. She wipes it away and smiles. Thank you, Odin. But this means that they are after your life. He turns to his men. 
seize the two women named Siglin and Miltrode, and secure the uninhabited cabin nearby. It has dangerous objects inside. Yes, yes sir! You lead one half of the men to the cabin, while Odin and Feralda lead the other half to look for Siglin and Miltrode. Time speeds up into a blur as the day's events unfold, as Odin and his men exchange information instead of guard posts. It only slows once when you hear Siglin and Miltroud screams in the distance. I'm surprised they weren't at the cabin. I thought they would, they would be waiting there. Everything is quickly prepared for the trial. Oh, that was fast. The people gather in the village center to witness the Honorable Odin's judgment. Odin's men have tied up Siglin and Miltroud and led them to the center. Miltroud cries as Siglin glares at you with utter fury. Please, please, spare me! You fucking traitor! I will haunt you your whole life, Isgard! Well, better to be... better that than be a murderer with you. I will drag you to hell! Same for you, Peralta! To hell! Silence! Odin's men kick the women down, forcing them to kneel. Odin steps forward and salutes with his fist on his chest. Let this be a lesson to all evil out there. In the end, justice will prevail. Men, your swords. They raise their blades. Time seems to stand still. In one clean cut, Siglin and Miltroud's heads are separated. Dang. No hesitation. They fall with a dull thud. No one dares speak out loud while Odin's men clean up. Many cross their hearts and whisper prayers. Feralda comes over and hugs you, trying to bring you comfort. You just feel empty. In the next few days, you are announced as a witness who uncovered the assassination plot and are honored with special protection by Odin. You notice that some of the villagers have started to avoid you, mainly Siglind and Miltroud's families. But others are simply glad that Feralda is unharmed, so in turn they have started to help you. Especially since your signs of aging have become more apparent. Odin, did, Odin explained your condition to the people as a result of an accident in the witch's cabin and asked them to be as careful with you as they are with other elders. That's nice. He publicly announced this as the reason for why the witch's cabin is now also under investigation to take away any dangerous spells and weapons for the people's safety. Months pass, and you slowly return to your daily life. Odin and Feralda marry. Hooray! The village starts getting more resources and care. Double yay! Your plan has worked. And Siglind and Miltrout are dead. It feels strange to watch it all happen like this. Yonhel chats with you as much as she can, but... You can't bring yourself to look at the pain in her eyes, or in the eyes of your family. Aga still looks teary every time she sees you, and your heart aches every time you see her. As the months go by, the pain begins to fade, but it never fully goes away. And then, one morning, you notice your face has gotten more wrinkled, and some strands of your hair have gone white. A few teardrops fall into the bucket, distorting your reflection. You don't know if you're crying because you fear death, or because you hate your changing face so much, or because it's just overwhelming to see so much time passing in an instant. It's all become too much sometimes. You're not sure what to make of yourself anymore. And then one day, Feralda calls you to Odin's home. When you arrive, it's Feralda who welcomes you and invites you to her room. As you enter, she immediately helps you to a chair. It embarrasses you that it's now so obvious that you need assistance. Odin is there as well. He looks down on you with cold eyes. Yeah, happy to see you too. Hello, so-called savior. <sighs> Look, I saved your wife, okay? That's gotta, that's gotta account for something, surely. Each step he takes towards you makes you feel smaller. But Feralda places herself between you and him. Odin! Could you please work on your expression? 
I see no reason for me to fix how I look in front of her. But you're being threatening towards my savior! Looking like a scolded puppy, he pouts and backs off. Thanks, Veralda. Veralda sighs. <sighs> you said you were grateful to her. I admit I am, but I'm also conflicted. She was involved with the plot, after all. How else do you want her to atone, though? To that, Odin can't seem to find an answer. I'm like, yeah, what else do you want me to do? Something like pity flashes through his eyes as he looks at your aging body. Anyway, that isn't why I called you here, Ysgard. I actually have some news. She sits down next to you and caresses her stomach. <gasps> Are you priggers? <gasps> ah! And we get to see ourselves! Oh, we're, we're aging, but we look cute! Adorable! We saved her! And she's getting- she's having a baby! Yay! I am pregnant. And, you see... We plan to name the child after you, if it's a girl. I love that! So she can be as brave as you. A feeling of serenity overcomes you. I think I can pass peacefully now. So you will keep remembering me? Of course! I have been so afraid, Feralda. Every day I'm reminded that I will soon disappear. But I am just bearing the consequences of my own actions. I... Thank you for honoring my life like this, Feralda. Of course, Ysgard. And thank you for all you've done for me. She hugs you and you share a quiet but warm afternoon with each other. Legacy ending. Aw, oh, I love that! That was so wholesome! I mean, aside from... Um, I... <laughs> I got my two co-conspirators chippy-chopped. But other than that, it was so wholesome. <laughs> Aww. You know what? For a dark fairy tale, that's a pretty happy ending. And I will take that any day of the week. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did. I thought this visual novel was very impressive. And uh, Nia, you should be very proud of yourself for all the work you and everybody did on this project. It was beautiful, it was haunting, dealt with some, you know, some dark subjects like jealousy and attempted murder and all kinds of stuff. Um, so, guys, if you would like to check this out for yourself, I will leave a link to uh, the Itch.io game page for it down below in the description. This game has four endings, so you can try your hand at getting one of the other three if you're interested. And I also have Nia's Tumblr link posted down in the description as well if you'd like to check out her Tumblr. But other than that, that is it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for joining me, and until next time, I will see you later.